Atari, Amiga, CDI, Coleco, Vision, and Television, Sega, Neo Geo, Turbo Graphics, 16 Odyssey, 3 do Commodore, Nintendo, Nerd. He's the angry video game nerd. Ass! Fuck! I'm gonna land this thing. Oh yeah, I'm finally gonna land the plane. This time, I'm gonna do it for real. Oh, I got it. I got, I got the speed right, but the altitude's off. Oh, oh, go too fast! Hey, if uh, anybody sees that plane, can you let me know? Mission three, blow shit up. Mission four, vent your anger and destroy the TV. Kids, strap yourself in for some action-packed racing. It's big rigs. 18 wheels of thunder, and we got trucks. Yeah, trucks. Big rigs. Off-road traction. More power for non-stop driving action. Big rigs. Over the road racing. Above the road, under the road. Who knows? Big rigs. Never lose a race again. You're always winner. With big rigs! Engines equipped with quantum phasing molecular mechanics to pass through solid objects so as not to interrupt the racing experience. Nothing stands in your way when you're big rigs! Rear spinning tires with warp drive velocity for interdimensional exploring. Leave the game behind and exceed the boundaries of existence! Big motherfucking rigs! Driving around in fucking trucks. Hey, you still don't own a Sega CD? Oh. What are you waiting for? Nintendo to make one? Uh -huh. You have seen the games, right? Ah. Wrong answer, man. Show them. Whoa! Wow, it's like you get to play the games on a CD. Check out the graphics. Full motion video, opposed to video that isn't full motion. 64 simultaneous colors, 12.5 megahertz processor. Holy shit, this thing is total fucking garbage. How would you like it if I conduct the rest of the video like this? Full motion video, my ass. I'd rather it be full fucking screen. So this is the Sega CD. It's a load of ass. You just pop it in the side of the Genesis like some deformed Siamese twin or something. You ever see Basket Case? Oh, whatever. So you put the fucking game in, and oh, guess what? It runs off of its own power adapter. Yeah, that's two. One for the Genesis and one for the Sega CD. If it can't run off the same power, why couldn't it just be its own independent system? Instead, it's like a fucking parasite or something. Then there's this problem, the load time. Load of shit. You can go dump your ass in the time it takes. So if you're gonna play the Sega CD, grab a beer and be patient. Nice. Fucking beautiful. The first ladder you see drops you into a pit where you get killed by a bird or a bat, whatever it is. And even if it wasn't there, I'd fall on the spikes. So it's basically death insurance. Let's put every kind of obstacle we can possibly think of in the very beginning of the game. You know, I'm disappointed. Couldn't there have been lava on top of the spikes with fire sharks swimming in it? Couldn't there be more spikes coming from the sides ready to close in and squash me while stabbing at the same time? How about some laser cannons and upside down volcanoes? You want to be even more efficient? Why even have the ladder? Why not just start the game falling down the pit? Fucking assholes. 
What happened here? I'm frozen? Okay, well, I guess I'm just gonna... Oh, okay, now he dies? How the fuck is a kid in 1987 without internet supposed to figure out how to beat this game? You just have to assume to go back to the beginning of the game. That means climbing out of this dungeon, finding another secret passageway, and work your way back. But you're not supposed to go back to the exact start point. That would be a little too easy to guess. So how about this? You fall off a random platform, the screen starts to glitch, and then you win. <laughs> And that's it. Don't you love games that just end with a black screen with plain text? At least they spelled congratulations right. The third line's a little off-center, but other than that, I don't see any errors. I guess that's why they kept it so short. They knew they'd fuck it up. But the last sentence mystifies me. Please try another world? What other world? As far as I know, there's a second quest, but it's the same exact game. The only difference is that the items are all in different spots. And after that, the game just keeps repeating over and over and over again, like a never-ending Easter egg hunt. Oh my goodness, this is awful! How could there exist a bad Zelda game, let alone three of them, and on a console that's not Nintendo? Regardless of which controller you have, it seems the CDI only uses two buttons. So to jump, you have to press up. Being that it's a platform game and a lot of the jumps have to be done with perfect accuracy, it wears on your thumb real fast. Another nuisance is that I can't hit the Dodongos because the bombs just fly over them. If I could duck and throw the bomb, maybe I could hit them, but you can't do that because it activates the status screen. Yeah, you have to be standing to use your items. But as difficult as it can be to slay the regular enemies, the boss battles are ridiculously easy if you know what weapon to use. They only take one hit. When you kill them, you get these amusing cutscenes. You've killed me! Good. Then you gotta wake Zelda. Come on! I'm here to rescue your royal ass. Get the hell up! Wake the fuck up. Oh, I get it. I just saved you from Ganon! I won! Nothing short of poetry. The most constant annoying thing is waiting for the screen to load. Watch how long it takes. Uh, and you're probably thinking, oh, it can't do that every time. Oh yeah, it does. Imagine how long it takes you to get anywhere. Look at the original Zelda. Watch how quick it is. See? And that was on an old 8-bit console. Damn CD load time. Look at this. That's when you grab your beer. The menu screen sucks. First of all, you can only hold one item. That includes the sword or wand, whatever. In the other games, you always have the sword and can select an additional item. Of course, the CDI doesn't utilize as many buttons, so whenever you need to use something, you bring up the menu screen. You know, playing these games is as worthwhile as melting a dog turd on a frying pan. Yeah, put some buffalo puke and some cat piss all over it, and you have a shit sandwich that is Zelda CDI. This game fucking sucks! <laughs> fucking sucks! <laughs> fucking sucks! <laughs> Oh yeah, in the Mario game, that one sucks too! Ugh, CDI sucks! Hey, Scott. The game has nothing to do with the movie. You're collecting clocks, throwing bowling balls, and dodging bees and other bizarre things. Imagine the problems Marty must go through on a daily basis, being cursed to walk for all eternity. Imagine trying to order at a fast food restaurant, or any restaurant. Imagine going to work, or trying to use a bathroom, or fly on a plane. He can only stand still when he's behind a counter at a cafe throwing milkshakes. Anybody who's played this cafe stage knows how unforgiving it is. The rest of the street stages are all the same, except they change the color. No effort. Time is money. Don't design another stage. Just change the color, and kids will think it's different. Do they think we're idiots? Then we come to an empty classroom where Lorraine, I guess, is shooting hearts at Marty. What is he, the teacher all of a sudden? And what's he catching hearts for? I suppose it's like in the movie where Lorraine has a crush on Marty, but that's his mom, so he's trying not to let that happen. Why isn't he avoiding the hearts then? Oh, I see. I guess he's catching them in a book or something? It's the most literal interpretation of a movie. It's about time, so let's have clocks. It's about romance, let's have hearts. Was this game designed by a human being? Or did they just feed the movie into a computer to process and then shit out this nonsensical fuck poop? The Enchantment Under the Sea dance where Marty plays guitar. 
What do you do? You have to catch musical notes. What more did you expect? At least you get some different music for once. Finally, the DeLorean. Yes, the DeLorean makes an appearance after all. This is supposed to be the scene where Marty's trying to get back to the future. The streets of Hill Valley are getting slammed with repeated lightning strikes. All you have to do here is dodge the lightning. That's all. Why are you dodging lightning anyway? Isn't Marty trying to get the lightning to hit the DeLorean to generate the 1.21 gigawatts and send them back to 1985? Isn't that the whole fucking idea of the movie? Anyway, that's Back to the Future NES. No special ending. Nothing. Fuck that music. Like if I just shat into a bag and wrote Back to the Future on it, that would be the same as this awful piece of shit. Next came Back to the Future 2 and 3. This one has the Back in Time song, or at least part of it. And the intro scenes follow the movie quite well. But then the game starts, and you see all these dinosaurs, snails, and runaway trash cans. What the hell happened here? It couldn't possibly be any more different from the film. In this timeline, when Biff brought the Sports Almanac to 1955, it somehow created a world full of piranha plants, killer clouds, and evil Martys. I like how it says Back to the Future on the bottom of the screen, just to remind you what you're playing. Otherwise, you'd forget it has anything to do with Back to the Future. At least you can skip to Part 3 with a code. On the title screen, hold B and select, then unscramble another word! If you know the code, you probably know the word. Why does everything have to be so cryptic? Back to the Future 3 on Sega Genesis. Believe it or not, it has the Back to the Future theme, but it sounds like ass. What a piece of shit. Naturally, the graphics are a big step up, going over to a 16-bit console, and it represents the film far better than the Nintendo games. But there's one fatal flaw. The difficulty. You're Doc Brown on a horse trying to save Clara from going into the ravine. Unfortunately, the ground is littered with crates and other random obstacles, and the air is filled with birds, tomahawks, and all kinds of projectiles. You get hit once, it knocks you off your horse, costing you precious time. If you fall only a few times, you have to start over. Hazards come without any warning. Ah, oh, you fucking processing! Stop being so blast! It's really hard to distinguish which objects are hazards and which are just there for decoration, like this underwear. This is a perfect example of a game that starts out way too hard. It's only the first level and I can't beat it! Oh, that fucking song. I am so sick of hearing that. Next time I hear Ghost Riders in the Sky, I'm gonna think about going 100 miles per hour on a horse, jumping crates and getting shot at and shit. Purple for putrid gameplay, blue for bad musical abominations, green for graphical farts and garlic, yellow for piss poor lack of loyalty to source material, orange for aren't you a fucking idiot, and red for high stress anger inducing masochism. Put that all together, you got all the colors of the shit rainbow. Hooray LJN. Easy angry video game nerd.